Hello and welcome to this week's episode of the Aviator South Africa podcast, Aviation Sunday episode 18. My name is Kavir and I'm the host on the show with Warwick. Today on the show we'll be joined by a fellow aviation enthusiast, Thomas and Devarshan. Today on the show we'll be talking about the Boeing 777X and how the build and aircraft is coming along, the flight of the last British Airways Boeing 747 and United Airlines COVID cargo. Send us your questions at theaviatorsouthafrica at gmail.com or in the comment section below for future Q&As. Enjoy the podcast. This episode is in association with African Pilot Magazine. Subscribe to Africa's finest aviation magazine today. For more information, go to www.africanpilot.co.za. The GE9X engines, which are being produced for the soon-to-be-released 777X, have recently received certification from the FAA, Federal Aviation Administration. These engines underwent 5,000 hours of testing. This is marking a major milestone for the build. The 777X's engines are the largest engines in commercial aviation and are roughly the same size as the 737 fuselage. At one stage, they were testing the massive engine on a General Electric Boeing 747, which looks crazy comparing the CF6s to the massive GE9Xs. So Boeing are planning to get this aircraft released by 2022, and so having the engines certified has obviously helped the procedure. As you would expect, a lot of in-flight testing is virtually impossible if the engines are not certified. Boeing is still waiting for high ETOPS approval so that they can fly long distances and challenge aircraft like a A350. However, this has not been received yet, so we have to wait. Hi everyone, it's Kabir here. Hope everybody's well and staying safe. Quick note, before we jump into our next topic and discussion, I was unfortunately unable to attend the live discussion with Warwick and Thomas in our studio due to personal reasons. However, I will be back with you in the next episode, joining them for the discussion. So I'm going to hand you over to the very excellent and capable hands of Warwick and Thomas. Enjoy. So Tom, the 777X has just received its certification of its engines, which is a massive part in the 777X build and how the whole aircraft is coming along. It's a major milestone. Um, so basically these engines, as we were saying, were are the biggest engines in commercial aviation history, which is a big step because any new engine is always a big project and a big, I don't know, milestone for an aircraft. But the engine size of these are just massive. So I mean a normal 777 or A330, A350 engine is, as you know, it's massive. I mean, it's it's a few times the size of an engine of, say, a 737 or an A, uh, A320. But then you just see these GE9X engines. And the majority of us have been in a 737. And basically, they're saying that the GE9X, which is the engine for the 777X, is roughly the same width and diameter um, as the whole 737 body or fuselage. Which is, I mean, massive. If you've been in a 737, it's just a, it's a big plane. And then you just think that the 777X is a much bigger plane. And the engines are, you know, are going to have to be much bigger. Tom? I mean, it's so true. And just, like, how, the fact of how big these engines are, and it's, it's really mind-blowing. And, and, and just how big they are. And obviously, the bigger the engine, the more... The like just the more outstanding it is, and the bigger milestone it is for the 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 company, or the like Boeing or or Airbus or you know any of these like plane manufacturers. It's just such a big thing, um, and so it's really exciting to see it all come together. Yes, and also I guess you've got the fuel economy of a bigger engine. The wider the fan diameter is, um, the more e- economic the engine is, which. As we, as the whole aviation industry is heading for a more economical and, I guess, green future, um, we've seen KLM using bio um, degradable, not biodegradable, but um, economic fuel, and I think we're just seeing more and more ideas. And the bigger fan isn't going to help stop um, the fuel usage and make it more economic. Well, it's going to make it more economic, but it's not going to stop the fuel usage. 
so it's more there just for it's going to help the airline more than the actual environment um and then another question is is it the triple seven x the perfect replacement for the uh seven four seven tom i think i think it really is like it's just such a it's it's such a great replacement for the seven four seven if you just look at you know, like the different like specs of of the different planes if you would call it that but just looking at the different things i mean the triple seven x is just like it's it's like if you could say this triple uh, the seven four seven's successor, if you know what I mean, it's it's more economical. It's just like a, to be honest, in my opinion, it's just a better plane all round. And I know that's probably not the best thing to say because the seven four seven was such a popular and such a great plane. But I mean, the triple seven X is just when you see it, will be, like mind blown. Yes, and with the triple seven X and the seven four seven being compared, I mean they both got. A very similar um, capacity in terms of passenger capacity. Um, I guess the one thing which the triple seven X may not have is the nose cargo door, which in the trip in the sorry in the seven four seven was such a major part of it because it meant that it could be used for passengers, and obviously it was very good at that. But then its main one of its main features was the um, front loading cargo door, which made it so much more economical on the ground in the way that they could load it up, unload it much more quickly, much more efficiently. And it was just a much easier plane to work with in terms of the cargo side of things. Um, but with regards to the whole replacement of the 747, I think it definitely could be a good replacement. Um, it's def As Tom said, it's more economical, which makes airlines want it more. It's got two massive fan engines, um, which the um, 747 had four little ones, CF6s. Um, so I think it's just, it, yeah, it's, it's almost the perfect replacement. And of course the folding wing tips are, you know, they're a high, they're, they're a good point. It's going to save airlines a huge cost um, in the future. And then also to talk about maintenance. Now Tom, would you like to say something about that? Just the maintenance or, or issue of these two planes, it's just the fact that the 747 is an older plane and when you get newer it, it just becomes more easier and cheaper to maintain uh whereas you have this the 747 and it's 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 quite old and it's it's a bit dated and so i mean the older the airplane gets just the more and more uh yeah the more and more costly the maintenance gets uh whereas the 777x they're brand new they just came out and it's it's they like it's just so less you will have to like main, maintain it so much less the service will cost less there'll be less to do and it's just all around it's it's better for the airlines that are buying them for it okay so now we're going to move on to the british airways boeing 747 400's retirement um so we'll have a bit of a um bit of info on the 747 in general you're listening to the aviators south africa in association United Cargo has been assisting with its service to clients for more than a decade. The company shared how they are using their resources to respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. United Cargo is prioritizing critical shipments as part of its initiative with supporting the global supply chain. They have also put together a COVID-19 task team to make sure they are prepared. The vaccines will be relying on cold chain logistics for an effective rollout. To solve this issue, United Cargo invested money in equipment to offer air cargo operation for cold shipping. For instance, in April, it became the first US-based cargo operation to lease temperature-controlled cold shipping containers made by Dokash Temperature Solutions, which is a container manufacturer. And apologies if I didn't pronounce the brand name. If you do know how to pronounce it properly, leave me a comment below. So we are back with Tom in our live studio. And currently we're going to have a discussion about United Airlines and how they have been responding to COVID-19. And so they have been trying to ship vaccines for quite a while now, um, but vaccines need to be cold and kept cold for them to work um, as planned. And so, and an aircraft with cold shipping is generally quite hard to come by, um, such as a lot of aircraft just do normal goods which don't need to be cold. Um, so... Basically, United Cargo, United Airlines Cargo, 
um, have been renting um, or leasing temperature controlled cold shipping containers. And I think this is a massive step for United Cargo and the aviation industry, Tom. No, I mean, I totally agree. It's, it's just such a big step, I mean, in the right direction, and especially for United uh, with this cold shipping. And as you said, it's it's not that easy to come by uh, cold shipping. Whereas, I mean, like most uh, airlines, you rarely, really find uh, cold shipping in, in these things. And it's just so great to have at least one airline that can do it and will be reliable in doing it. Yes, because currently, well, previously, cold shipping was basically always done by a cargo ship. Um, and I think it will be a massive step. Um, and indeed, it will definitely be a good entrance for the aviation industry to start cold shipping. And I think United will probably end up give you well, a lot of airlines will end up utilizing United's idea. Um, so it will be interesting to follow and see what happens with this. A while ago, we saw British Airways retire its entire Boeing 747-400 fleet, and a few days ago, we saw the final takeoff of the last remaining British Airways 747-400 to eventual scrapping. The last aircraft to be taken off prior to retirement was the first Boeing 747-400 that British Airways have, had received in 1993. That means they have to own this aircraft for 27 years and a whole 747 range up for 50 years. BA were only supposed to retire the 747 in 2024. The final flights of G-CIVB and G-CIVY received flight numbers of BA-747 and BA-400. This was intended to represent Boeing 747-400. We've already spoken at length about this topic in a previous episode. It should be in the cards or description below. This is an extension of the ABA to South Africa podcast. Find us on Google Podcasts, Spotify, Anchor, and more. Also, if you need additional assistance, email us at the ABA to South Africa gmail.com. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the ABA to South Africa. We'll see you next time on next week's Sunday, 3 p.m. South African time. Please, stay safe, stay home. Together, we can beat the coronavirus. Hashtag stay home South Africa. To find out more about the coronavirus, visit sacoronavirus.co.za for more information. There's also a WhatsApp support number at 0600-123-456. That is 0600-123-456. Stay safe, South Africa.